Hello everyone, I am Dr. Meena Yadav. I am Associate Professor at Lal Bahadur Shastri Institute of Management and Development Studies. I will be talking about introduction to derivatives and derivatives market. Before I start this session, I would like to talk about a very simple and a very basic concept and that is financial markets. Now, what are financial markets? We all are aware financial markets are the markets where financial instruments are available, financial instruments are traded. Now, the question arises, ma'am, what are the examples of financial instruments? Financial instruments are like bonds, they are like debentures, they can be like equity shares and so on. So, depending upon the nature of any financial instrument, depending upon their nature, depending upon their characteristic, depending upon their maturity period, the financial market has been classified broadly into two aspects. They are the money market. Now, we can see money market is a market where funds or the investment is there for the short term, usually for a period of an year or less than that. The second segment of the capital, uh, the second segment of the financial market is the capital market. Capital market is a market which is very popular. We, we usually know the secondary market segment of the capital market as equity share or uh, uh, we can say that equity market, secondary market, share market. So, it is a market which has a long maturity, which has both the debt as well as, as the equity. Now, this capital market is further classified into three segments and what are those three segments? The first is the fixed income segment, that is the segment where we will be having debentures and the preference stocks or you can say the preferred stocks. The second and the very, very popular segment, the cash segment which is very commonly known as the equity or the stock market segment. And the third one that is the derivatives market where you will find futures, options, swaps, etcetera and they are the instruments which are traded in that derivative segment. Now, when we talk about the financial markets, they play a very, very crucial role in any economy. They provide various options, they provide various instruments where a company as well as as a trader can invest in several financial instruments and financial securities. They play a very crucial role in uh, I would say they, they provide a very crucial role in providing the funds, the rare funds, the scare funds to the economy. So, to know more about it we will go to the functions or you can say the importance of financial markets. So, the first role is the fund mobilization. You will find you will find the, uh, the people, the investors, the savers, the people who are looking for the funds, there are the people who are willing to invest the funds. So, the funds can be mobilized at in the financial markets. At the same time, there is lot of liquidity. Now, what do we mean by liquidity? Liquidity means availability of funds. So, when any market, any market of any company or uh, sorry on any country is well developed then the equity is equally available. Next, the prices are also determined in the financial markets. Now, when we say prices are determined, how the prices are determined? As per the first point, the first point says fund mobilization. So, every market will have a buyer as well as a seller. So, here we do not have a buyer, here we have seekers of funds and the people who are making funds available. So, if the demand for funds is more and the seekers are less, right? So, depending upon the equilibrium between the seekers and the suppliers. If the seekers are more and the supplier is less, then the price will rise and if the seekers are less and the supply is too much, then the price will be less. So, accordingly the prices of various uh, uh, instruments, various assets are available in the uh, this financial markets. Now, as per the um, we can say the concept of 
economies of scale, even the transaction costs are reduced in the financial markets, capital formation is taking place. So, we can say that the financial markets act as an intermediary between the savers and the investors and then they try to dig out the prices at a reduced uh, transaction cost and the capital is formed. Right? So, financial markets we can say that they are the backbone of the economy of any country. Now, having said this, I would like to state one thing that any investor, we have mentioned a lot about investor in the, you know, in this slide and the previous slide, that the investor wants to get into the financial markets to get adequate positive rational returns. Now, what happens that because of the risk in the market? And why the risk comes? Because of the volatility in the prices of the securities. Securities can be like uh, shares, they can be commodities, they can be currency. So, because of the risk in the market, the entire planning, the entire process of thinking of getting an adequate return, the planning gets disturbed. To safeguard itself from the risk, to safeguard it, the investor things of developing new instruments, so that they are able to hedge themselves against the risk. This was one aspect when we are talking about financial markets from the perspective of an investor. Now, on the macro level what has happened? On the macro level with time, you know with growth with over the past year, so many years what has happened that the uh, international trade has increased, the business volumes have increased. Why? Because of lot of liberalization, because of globalization all over the world. So, the trade has increased and so because of that need, demand, requirement for the international money, requirement for the financial instruments have also increased at the global level. Now, and why and when when such air demands increase when so much of volume is there when so much of demand is there when so much of activities business activities are there it is well understood that there will be changes in the interest rate there will be changes in the exchange rate there will be changes in the stock market prices and all of this so much of volatility so much of movement are going to lead to what they are going to lead to the financial risk to the corporates. So, as I said in the previous slide that both at an individual level, at a retail level also an investor tries to hedge himself against or herself against the risk and similarly at an international level also and at the national level also the corporates, they also want to hedge themselves against the risk arising because of the these different variables. right? So, so to manage such risk, from time to time new financial instruments are being developed and in, uh, in the financial markets and which are popularly known as financial derivatives. So, this is what we are going to talk about in this session and I will try to explain it as simple as possible because many a times when we talk about derivatives, many people call it as derivatives, you know people get afraid, people feel that it is a very complicated topic, people feel that it is a very difficult topic, people feel it is a very complex topic, but I would try my best to explain it to you in a very, very simple manner. So, let us first try to understand the meaning of derivatives. So, what is a derivative? Derivative is a word which is formed from derivation. What is derivative? It is a word which is derived from derivation. Now, what is derivation? Derivation means something which has been derived, it has been brought out from somewhere, it does not exist anywhere, it has been derived from somewhere. Okay? So, it means that something which arises out of underlying variables. Now, this is a technical word underlying variables. What are these underlying variables? Because we are able to understand it is it means it is a word which is arise which is dri driven out of something till here it is fine, but underlying variables variables means first I will explain variables then I will go to the underline variables means the things which vary that means which are not fixed. Because when we study anything, there, there, there can be a constant, there can be a variable like 2 is constant, but x usually is variable. Why? Because if we put x in an equation, x can get any value. So, anything which is varying 
anything which is varying will be treated as the underlying asset. Now, what is underlying asset or underlying here? Underlying means anything. You know what happens in derivatives? We usually go as a betting. And now betting can be like uh, like today in Lucknow, if the temperature is 35 degrees. Now, people can bet that by the evening or maybe by tomorrow, the temperature of Lucknow will be 42 degrees, right? So the main what is the underlying variable the temperature of Lucknow which can be 42 degrees now it is possible it can be 42 it can be more than 42 it can be less than 42 so there will be some people who will be saying that its temperature is going to be 42 or more and somebody will be saying it is not going to reach 42 it's going to remain lower than that so that is your that so the, that temperature here is an underlying variable it can be anything we can say the uh, uh, the price of potatoes or maybe price of onions now very soon uh, navratri is uh, it's there uh, so uh, you know people will say that the prices of fruits they are going to rise they will say they are not going to rise so here what is an underlying variable the underlying variable is the fruits Right. So, when we are going to take a position, when I say position, position, I will be explaining this in the further slides also. The position here means whether I am trying to become as a buyer or a, as a seller. So, when I am trying to take a position that is either I am becoming a buyer of a derivative or a seller of a derivative depending upon this underlying variable, then we are actually talking about derivatives. So, derivatives that actually do not have their own any specific uh, uh, positions or their existence, their entire existence depends upon the underlying asset, underlying variable and that can be anything. Now, here since we are studying financial derivatives, so in financial derivative instrument, the, the values will be derived from what? The values will be derived from the financial markets. So, in financial markets, what do we have? we have equity share if we go it like that ways financial markets we have suppose equity shares or we have sensex or we have the value of index now that can become my underlying variable and when i take my position according to it that the stock price of maybe hcl is going to rise or fall then that decision, that option, that opportunity which I am getting into, that investment which I am getting into is known as financial derivatives. Okay? And so, as the value of the financial derivative will change, you know, the value of financial derivative will change on the changing in the value of the underlying financial instrument. So, if as I said, if I am taking a share of uh, let us take HCL, we are going to discuss everything in the uh, 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 further classes. So, if HCL today is at 239, rupees 239, so it can increase, it can decrease, right. So, if I am taking my thought, if I am planning and if I am entering into a contract with few people and I will say that the uh, stock, you know, the it is 239 is going to rise or it is going to fall down. So, my position, my value of entering into this contract right will be totally dependent upon whether the HCL actually moves from 239 or it falls down. Suppose it if, if there is an opportunity that the its, its price is going to rise from 239 to maybe 245 or 250, my this derivative value is also going to change. So, these are little technical issues which, which can be taken care in the further slides, but I think this, this point is clear. Number one that derivatives do not have their own significance, they totally depend upon the underlying variables and their value totally varies as per the underlying uh, these assets. So, if the assets are going to uh, the values are going to rise, the value for the derivatives is going to rise and so the other way around. Right. So, Further, now we can understand from whatever we have just, um, uh, you know, just try to understand in the previous slide. We have understood that the derivatives indicate that they do not have any independent value, and its value is entirely defined or derived from the value of the underlying asset. And the underlying assets can be securities, as I mentioned, they can be commodities, they can be bullions. When I am talking about commodities, they can be metals, copper, zinc, they can be agricultural products like wheat, you know, etcetera. They can be currency, they can be livestock, anything, anything, because here we are talking about financial derivatives, I am mentioning them. Otherwise, you know, uh, you can put a bet on anything. 
Next, so if we try to define financial derivatives, so what is happening that as per the uh, Securities Contract Regulation Act uh, 1956, they have defined derivatives as a security derived from the debt instrument, loan whether it is secured or not secured, risk instrument or a contract for differences or any other form of security, right. So, this is what we have already mentioned, I have already explained it, this is in a definition form and very important that con the derivative is a contract which derived its value from the prices of the, you know, underlying securities, we have mentioned it that, right. So, from this we can understand one thing is that, that the derivatives are the financial products. Number one, derivatives are the financial products. Number two, derivative is derived from the other instruments. So many times I have explained this. So, if uh, here the underlying security is what? If the underlying security is nifty index, then what will be the derivative? The derivative will be nifty futures. Okay? So, derivatives derive their value from the other financial instrument or a contract. Right. Next is, so in general we can say from the aforementioned that the derivatives refer to the securities or to the contracts that derive from another whose value depend upon the other assets. Right. So, the financial derivatives are the financial instruments whose prices or values are derived from the prices of the other underlying financial instruments or financial assets. So, I believe by this now in, in you know, including this slide and the last 3, 4 slides we have tried to understand, we have tried to you know merge this concept in our mind that what is derivatives, right. Now, I am giving you an example that a stock option, right. I will be talking about various types of uh, derivatives in the uh, next classes. So, stock options value depends upon the value of the stock on which the option is written. So, a uh, few minutes back I uh, explained you if HCL is trading at 229, so the derivatives value will depend upon how this stock of HCL is moving. If it is moving on the upper side, the derivatives value will be different and so the lower ones. Next, so if, if we are talking about your um, uh, you know futures, if we are talking about the value of the treasury bills, in that case the treasury bill will be the underlying asset, right. Similarly, if you are talking about a currency future, now you will say ma'am what is this option, what is this futures, what is this you know I am not able to understand for that do not panic just as of now concentrate on the simpler, very, very simpler meanings of derivatives. Like if I am using a term future, I will be explaining it to you later that if there will be a currency future. So, a currency futures value will be dependent upon the foreign currency. Similarly, a treasury bill future will be dependent upon or a contract will be dependent upon the underlying asset and that underlying asset will be treasury bill, right. Now, so in other words we can say that which is very, very important that the prices of derivatives are not arbitrary. Right, arbitrary means that they are not just you know just like that, they are not uh, you know mentioned just like that, they are not uh, here and there you are putting them, no. The value, the price of the derivatives are totally linked or they are totally affected by the prices of the underlying assets that will automatically affect the price of the financial derivatives. Okay. So, what do, what do I mean by this? You know, because by now student will think, suppose I mean uh, you know if, if I have this pen with me right now. So, this is my underlying asset. Now, I will if I say this uh, you know the price of this pen will increase from uh, let us take from 50 rupees, I am thinking that its price is going to rise to 70, 75, right. So, then I, accordingly the, the whatever position I will be taking, the bet I will be taking 
the price will be dependent upon that. I will not say, I will not put the bet that the price will go to 300 rupees or to 400 rupees, right. So, it is not arbitrary, it is not just you know manipulative, you are not going to just find it from here and there. You are going to get the price of any derivative from the price of the underlying. This, this, the underlying asset here in this example, it is this pen is the underlying asset and its price the volatility, the expectation of the volatility, the expectation of the movement of, of this uh, in the price of this pen is actually going to decide the price of the derivative, the financial derivative. Okay? So, because of this reason, now here this is the most important line. Why? You know, because in the beginning of my session, I said that the derivatives are an instrument of financial markets, but why they have been developed, why they have uh, you know why they have been thought of, they have been thought of to mitigate, to lower down the risk. Okay? So, here what is happening that because the value you know something is happening in the real market, in the cash segment. So, because of that what is happening? to lower down the risk, to, to lower down the possibility of volatility of the you know uh, of the prices, to offset the risk which, which can take place in the cash segment, in the commodity market, these concept of financial derivatives come into existence. They are here, you know the real purpose of studying financial derivatives is to hedge, I am repeating the term hedge, is to hedge ourselves against the anticipated risk. There can be a possibility of risk and you know when I say this, because in finance it is a very beautiful saying that you know people say that if there is a chance of loss, why any person would invest? No. In finance what happens, it is all about the calculation, it is all about the calculation. Here somebody can feel, somebody can calculate that the prices are going to rise and accordingly I will take the position. Similarly, any investor may feel that the prices are going to fall and accordingly they will take the position. So, you know what happens that when when we are talking about financial derivatives, I am talking about two very, very important things and those two important things are that the fun, rather three I would say financial derivatives they take their value from the underlying security number one and I have explained in detail the underlying security. Number two financial derivatives are there to hedge against the risk and number three very important this risk whenever there is a risk there is a possibility there is an opportunity of investment there is a possibility, there is an opportunity of earning returns. So, you know there are people who actually wait for the risk to happen to occur in the market and from there they will be able to earn. So, financial derivatives in general you know they are good for those who are who want to hedge themselves against the risk as well as for those who wish to you know in, uh, they want to take return from the risk. Right. So, uh, financial derivatives now when we have understood this much very quickly we will try to understand that there are basically two types of financial derivatives oh sorry there are two types of derivatives commodity and financial. So, when we are talking about commodity derivatives, commodity derivatives is actually about things goods right and what are they can be they can be agricultural goods they can be wheat soya beans cotton they can be metals they can be gold silver etc so again further detail in the other further slides but here we are able to understand what are commodity when i am taking my positions when i am putting a bet on the price movement of wheat that means i am getting into a commodity derivative. When I am taking position either of a buyer or a seller on the basis of the movement in the prices of gold that means I am getting into commodity derivative. And then we have the next is type of derivative is a financial derivative. This is what we are going to understand in this entire subject. In financial derivatives we are talking about the positions, the here the underlying assets will be the financial instruments, financial instruments like stocks, bonds, treasury bills, interest rates, foreign currencies and other hybrid securities. So, financial derivatives as I said basically includes 
they basically includes futures, forwards, options and swaps. So, that these all will be defined uh, in a detailed concept. So, lastly I would like to say that future contra, uh, contacts um, are the most important uh, form of derivatives and uh, to sum up we can say that the financial derivatives can also be derived from the combination of cash market instruments or other financial derivative instruments. If you think you know the last point here is that if you think that derivatives is an absolutely new concept, no derivative is not an absolutely new concept, derivatives you know they, they exist from older generations also, they were there, they are a mixture of cash market instruments, they are the mixture of other betting instruments and then they are combined together and then you know a concept has come with time you know as, as we know that earlier there was test matches, they were test matches in cricket, then, then there was this uh, one days and then one days day and night matches and uh, you know the with white ball and everything and now 2020 has come. So, similarly financial derivatives are not absolutely new concept you know they, they were there, but they have been brought into practice more and more just because of the need of an R and need of an R is because of the globalization, because of so much of porous movement all over the world, all over the globe you require financial security. So, uh, this is what I wanted to state in, uh, in this introductory session, thank you so much.